Good morning, all, and welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders across the digital infrastructure industry. We're joining you from day two of broadcasting live from the Expo Hall at Yada in Las Vegas. And joining me today for our very first interview of the day, we're kicking things off right here. Uh -huh, I think uh, we've, so. We've Keep got, the energy up. That's yeah. right. That's right. Mark's bringing it this morning. We've got Mark Gusikoff. He is with the International Data Center Authority. Thanks so much for being here. Oh my God, Keely. Thanks so much. What an incredible crowd. What great energy. First year. I'm honored to be a big part of this. This is incredible. This is wonderful. George Rocket really nailed it on this one. He, he really did. We've just heard nothing but excellent, excellent feedback. I had no everybody. doubts. Just, you know, full disclosure. I, I no Neither doubts. did I. Neither did I. Everything, we, it, all expectations met and exceeded thus far. Indeed. Yeah. So let's um, let's get into this. Let's talk a little bit it. about what you've got going on. Um, quite a lot. Can you just explain to us a little bit about what you're doing with the IDCA at the moment? Absolutely. So um, IDCA, the International Data Center Authority, I'm the chief certification officer for them. And we're really looking at a holistic global ecosystem of what are we doing with people? What are we doing with the sites, the facilities? What are we doing with the componentry within that facility? And really bringing all of that together cohesively so that we're not thinking about this either segmented or fragmented and even worse disjointed where everybody within this space has really been asking for what's coming next in regulatory compliance and we have massive power considerations massive constraints the deck's pretty heavily stacked against us i mean you've got some places within the united states that say yeah you can come build but may not be giving you power that's tough. I mean, that's a tough pill to swallow. So what are we going to do for on-site power generation? Are people going to be back feeding into the grid? Um, but it, it, long story short, in working with people within the industry, we really want to bring everyone together in this space. We are that connective tissue and that tie that binds so that we're preparing our people, we're preparing the sites, we're preparing the equipment manufacturers, and also vetting them out to make sure that we have the best possible solutions within the industry. Yeah, it's sort of that infinite-minded look at the business as though, you know, sometimes we might be rivals, but there are times when we all should be working together and sharing well, ideas. And our process is called the infinity paradigm. So that's a really <laughs> nice plug. And I didn't have to set that up. So thanks so much. That's I didn't really do cool. that. I didn't do that intentionally, <laughs> but I'll take it. Yeah, so thanks. You, you mentioned a little bit of the human piece of it, you know, making yeah. sure that you've got the people in place and you're also doing some work with Nomad Futurist oh, yeah. all, along that vein. Can you explain that to us as well? Oh my God. Yeah. So um, Nabil Mahmoud and Phil Koblenz, you know, and thanks for being a partner with us as well within the space, um, you know, started Nomad Futurist many years ago. And we are really focused on demystifying digital infrastructure for emerging talent. If I have to say it in a line and I say that one a lot, uh, um, we, we want to take people that aren't in the industry and make them aware that we exist, but we also really want to do that in a positive light. And one of the things that I'm a big advocate for is I don't think we get the best media perception in the industry. You know? And it's tough because people are out there needing Amazon, you know, needing their services, watching Netflix, downloading content, pulling files off their Google Drive, but we also get a lot of pushback from people that don't necessarily understand what we're all about in the industry. And it's important to bring attention in a positive light to the positive contributions that we have. With the advent of AI, people are looking at us like we're you know, Terminator and Skynet and things are going to take over. <laughs> and if we're not careful, that could be a reality. I know Bill Clayman will love that, that little plug there that if we're not careful, you know, that could be our reality next. But I really want to make sure that when we look at who's coming into the industry, I'm not just focused on the youngest demographic. We really focus on emerging talent. That could be people coming out of, you know, service industry, military service, coming in from a, a transition to civilian life. Um, but like me, I've only been in the industry for three years. And I came from industrial automation and fluid power. And I'm taking the skills that I had from my past life and trying to do everything I possibly can to translate into this space. It's very important. It is. It is very important. We need like you're talking about the people to come in and bring us into the next phase of what does this look like 10, 20, 30 years from now. Mm. But we also 
we're going to continue to need more data centers. And yeah. I, we're seeing, you know, stories bubble up. You're talking about negative press about people saying that I, I want a data center. I just don't necessarily want it here. Not in my backyard. You're, you're doing, yes, the, the not in my backyarders. So you're, you're also doing very important work with IDCA to advocate for data centers and the benefits and just the leaps and bounds of improvements that they've made in terms of efficiency. Oh my gosh. So the global footprint of this, you know, working with other countries, one of the things that I did um, a few months ago is I took, took an opportunity to travel the world and I did it without any kind of bias behind that. So I wasn't really representing any organization and I wanted to put my money where my mouth was. I want to see what was happening in APAC. I wanted to see what was happening in EMEA and then figure out what everyone needed. And I know I said this in the beginning, but the common thread that everybody said was we need standardization. We need regulatory compliance. But one of the coolest things I saw out of this, is everybody said, we want to know what happened in North America and be able to strengthen our position based on what you've already done, learn from some mistakes, which is a really good thing, but we're open to the help. We're open to that support. And not, yeah. and people aren't just coming and saying, hey, give us a bunch of money and do this. It's a real strong pull to get intelligence, to get experience, and to get some additional layers of support so that we can build this faster to scale. We have 300,000 engineering jobs that are going to be needed with the advent of AI coming. That's a massive number. And it we're lucky if we get 10,000, you know? So as this thing starts to evolve and develop, we need to be offering layers of support. I'm gonna do another shameless plug with for Dean Nelson. We had an innovation uh, session where I was very honored to be one of the judges. It was super fun. Dean comes in from Cato and he shows a really cool slide where he talks about the shift and the flip for the immediate need that we have is gonna be in human capital and, and people in training and focused on that training component. And then the innovation you know, stack was like a, I, and I, I'm gonna screw this up, Dean, so be mad at me, but it was like a 10% to 90% you know, differential. And actually what is gonna to need to happen because we can't get enough people is we're gonna to have to flip that. We're gonna to have to get the innovation to take the place of the skills and training that we aren't able to get because there just aren't enough people. Yeah don't have enough awareness. And until I can get a Super Bowl commercial, it's going to be really hard to get the word out other than word of mouth. So we're doing things like this. And I really appreciate you taking the time to bring people in to spread the word and talk about this in an open setting like this from smart people. I'm not one of those, but to get smarter, be, people smarter than me. You are one of those, this. or we wouldn't have invited you here, Mark. Come Thank on you so now. much. Thank yeah. you so much. So it sounds like you've really learned a lot on that data center that you were talking about your international data center tour, yep. uh, as it were. And it sounds like you've picked up on a lot of things on, we're not doing things the same way in any one area. It's a no. one set of rules in APAC and it's another set in, yeah. in EMEA and it's another set in, in North America. Yeah. So with IDCA bringing all of these, you know, bringing the globe together and really being that connective tissue, um, one of my favorite examples to talk about, I'm going to sidebar for just a second. When I went to APAC, we talk in the industry about alternative energy resources. So we're really going to need to find ways to get natural gas in place. And I love the concept of small module reactors. Idaho National Labs invited me to come and see the largest test reactor on the planet at the end of this month. And Idaho National Labs is interested in bringing people in our space to have roundtable discussions on what we're going to be doing and how we're going to work together because they want to demystify the bad press that they're getting as well, but they're asking us for that help and support. Truly an honor to be doing that. One of the cool things I noticed was in APAC, the conversations were very heavy around solar as a very, very realistic, viable solution to alternative energy. And I don't want to bring it down, but here, not so much. And part of that is on the equator, you get 12 hours of direct overhead sunlight, 365 days a year. Right. But depending on where you are on the globe, you may only get, I'm in Buffalo, New York, so it's kind of dreary and gloomy all winter. I can't get any solar resource for three solid months out of the year. So for me, it's not gonna be viable. We have wind turbines and there are wind farms, et cetera. But until we really get harnessed in on a renewable resource or a sustainable resource like nuclear, which is a very sustainable resource, we need to learn about that, not necessarily be afraid of it, understand what the protocols are for nuclear in that capacity. I'll go back to the IDCA position where in order to work with other countries within the space, I mean, this is something that we're working with investors and we're working with the global consortium of 
owners and operators and buyers and countries at the ministry level to be able to get this thing going and make some traction so that North America is providing the resources to the rest of the planet that we can. Yeah. It's again, it's it's so important. We need to be educating people, especially about nuclear. It's just one of the it's, it's kind of a, a hot word. If you say it, people get a little bit uneasy over it. And we just need to provide some education on what that is today and how that can fit into the overall picture. So thank you and keep up the great work. Yeah, thanks so much. Is there any um, any place that we can go to keep up with you and what you guys have got going on with Nomad Futurist and IDCA? Wow. So uh, Nomad Futurist, www.nomadfuturist.org. Um, IDCA, www.idc dash a dot org and then naturally you know I, I try to keep up with all the other selfie kings in the industry to bring awareness to all the great people that are here and uh 60 second podcast as well that i'm doing that i want to know in less than a minute I'm trying to garner two layers of support in that. so i want to talk to the industry experts and ask them a really easy question to bring awareness to people who aren't in the industry to some of the pressing issues we have and then i also want to take people that maybe aren't as vocal or as public or haven't had an opportunity to speak publicly. And I want to hear from them. I really want to hear the voice of everyone across the board so that we can bring more awareness to what we're doing in this space. All right. Sounds like you've got a busy, uh, busy year ahead. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the rest of the show here today. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful so great. time. Thanks for having me. Thanks to our viewers for tuning in. Stick around. So much more to come here as we continue broadcasting live from the Expo Hall at Yada 2024. Stick around, but in the meantime, stay curious and stay connected, everyone.